Oh, that's somewhat... What? What happened? You can't just... What the fuck? I let us all down. Hmm? What? I was just trying to chop some grass. Do, do, do. Okay, so where we uh, left off from last week, we defeated uh, Roddy, Lily, and Galahad being manipulated by a French stereotype. So we got their asterisks. We, um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, Red Mage, Ranger, uh, Shield Bearer. I did do some grinding along the side and uh, a few inconsequential side quests because it was pretty obvious I was quickly getting overpowered. So I've equipped the Red Mage for Gloria and Elvis. Where are we going here? My parents were rich, but they showed me no affection, no love. I spent my entire childhood all alone in our big house. Even when I went out, I hated everyone I met. They were ugly and stupid. Mm. First world problems. The world was ice cold, deep blue. Everything's fine with your life, but uh, just one thing isn't quite right, and therefore you go off the deep end. The ice cold, deep blue, deep end. Sounds like whoever wrote it had a pretty low opinion of others. Or a high opinion of themselves. Pretty much every Final Fantasy fan. Oh uh, yeah, so I, like I said, I've leveled up a little bit, so the enemy should be quite scared of me. Fear me, fear me. More writing, more gibberish. My life really began the first time I picked up a paintbrush. And so the paintbrush became like a weapon, right? Of course no one understood my gift. Is all that or they were jealous of it? This is basically how Norman Bates and Patrick Bateman were born. No one appreciated me. No one even tried to appreciate me. I became angry. Very angry. Well, whoever this is certainly isn't lacking in ego. But can you imagine? Finally discovering something that brings you joy, only for your life to remain as miserable as ever. Oh my god, she's developing Stockholm Syndrome. I can certainly sympathize with their frustration. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, what, 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 what? So I'm guessing here, too? Yeah. Oh. Oh. That is disgusting. The asterisk has made me happy. The traveler who gave it to me... She also gave me hope. Literally. I can make them do whatever I want. <laughs> oh, so like their paintbrush makes things happen and come to life. Now my talent can't be ignored. It burns bright red. The red of excitement. The red of joy. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, and I didn't realize that the equipment was so class agnostic. So any class can equip anything, apparently. And you see those letters on the left side of each of the, the pieces of equipment, the B, A, D, E, B, B, D. So every single class has a certain affinity towards certain kinds of items. A, uh, a red mage has an A affinity towards like swords, and so they gain the, the benefits of equipping a sword. But if they equipped a uh, an axe, for example, their stats would go way, way down because their affinity is less. And certain classes have better affinity with certain items. Oh, my. Corpses. 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 They've all had their throats cut. Oh, seriously? Can you show it to me in graphic, graphic JRPG detail? The blood makes it look like flowers from a distance. I knew some of them. This is... This is awful. Show me the cutthroat. Show me the cutthroat. She killed all these people just for their blood? Using their blood as paint? I don't think giving this villain some kind of a backstory narrative really justifies any of this. We don't really experience it. It's just like their version of the story. Because every single playthrough, we've gotten like 
three new asterisks, so I'm expecting maybe we'll get three more. Maybe the final three. And it turns out that every single one of these specials is not tied to a character, it's actually tied to a class. At first I thought it was tied to a character and a class, but it turns out it's only tied to a specific class. So uh, Seth, his limit break as a freelancer is actually uh, Gloria's limit break as a freelancer as well. What the hell? What the hell? What is this Devil May Cry shit? Put the brush down. Put the brush down and step back. Will you be quiet? I am trying to focus here. How dare you disrupt my flow? Now they must have an asterisk too, right? You made it here already. <sighs> Fine. Hi, I'm Polly. I didn't ask for your name. I am an artist. And even idiots like you must understand that an artist must make art. So basically, you're evil for the sake of being evil. You know what primary colors are, yes? Blue, red, and yellow? You mix them to make all the others. So you're just insane. You were involved with the theft of the crystals. Involved, yes. But it wasn't just me. There were a few of us. From Savalon, Rheimdall, all over the place. And why would you divulge all this information? Anyway, it was a lot of work. But the good news is... My masterpiece is almost complete! <laughs> oh, is this girl like just like a twisted version of Realm from Final Fantasy VI? Is she gonna like paint a purple octopus? Just for a painting. How dare you! Art is the most important thing in the world! You killed Mona. But I thought it was an accident. You didn't think of knocking on the door and say, I need some paint, here's 50 bucks? I'm fine. I've just realized something is all. Have you been taken under the influence of Picasso? Are you going to turn on us? Please say you're going to turn on us. Make it interesting. It's payback time! Huh? Super Saiyan Elvis? What is this purpose that stirs you so? Hmm, that's an interesting question. What is this purpose that stirs him? There's some old friends need my help. I mean, our friends in need to drop everything and go running, eh? Well, that's just how it is. Ah, moral simplicity. Got it. Ah, but what if your new friends become like enemies with your old friends? Though you know that to choose such a path might lead to sorrow and hardship. Please let it lead to sorrow and hardship. Now, if the game does the right thing, it will truly test that resolve in him. But I'm guessing, based on everything so far, it probably won't. God, we gotta fight fucking the son of Patrick Bateman and Salvador Dali. My masterpiece is to be given the gift of life! Prepare to be sacrificed for the sake of art! If I have to die in an RPG in any creative way, it would be this way. Dying for the sake of art. If she's like Realm, she might end up just conjuring these things continuously, no matter what we do. Ooh! Oh, you're dead! Next hit, you're dead! Darkwa? What? Right, so he's a red mage, and therefore he has the same limit break, quote unquote, as Gloria. Boom! Perfection! Oh, that's interesting. The music that plays during the limit break is different for each of them. So Seth's was like kind of like this samba, jazzy, uh, Latin beat. Be healed. And what's cool is that she heals twice now for the cost. Uh, no! No! All right, this bullshit. There are certain enemies in this game that counter white magic, so you can't heal through normal means. Oh crap, oh crap. God damn it. Why do you have to make this so difficult? Are you jealous of me? Is that it? How pathetic. How pathetic. How pathetic. I love the crazy eyes that she makes. No way you can survive this. That's like 5,000 per hit. Prepare for impact. How could I lose against such oddlessness? How could I lose against such oddlessness? So now that we've grinded, we can perhaps get through some of these fights a little bit easier. A little bit easier. Damn, that was way easier than the, the previous three. The previous three were insane. Ooh, ooh. So how's that different from the the bard? 
The earth crystal obtained. The real earth crystal. My, my masterpiece. I was really hoping that you could get a little bit more perspective on this character's journey with their art so that this actually sounds justified. A new kind of beauty? These cracks. Their veins leading down to the beating heart of the earth. I would love to play a JRPG where this actually sounds completely logical. Where this is completely believable. So far, this game has been... It's like par for the course, but it's like really par for the course. Really good if you just expect kind of a very par for the course experience. Uh, nothing. Forget it. Another bird? Listen, I just want to thank you all for everything you've done. Are you sure you need to leave right away? We'd love it if you could stay a little longer. And so far, every playthrough has been kind of the same pattern, where you're searching for something that will yield you like three asterisks, you get some guest party members that join you temporarily, they fight with you, some stuff happens and then, I mean a boss fight happens and then they leave and then you move on to the next part. And it's also weird that every single one of these portions is like a self-contained story arc that kind of resolves itself at the end. <laughs> uh -huh, eh? Like they've already made sure peace the with losing their daughter. The you come home. That's a promise. Yeah, isn't it? Weird, they're dressed sort of like Scientologists. Have you decided where you're headed next? Right, and then there's a conversation about where we're headed next, which will conveniently give us the destination of the next section of the game. And was it ever explained why they dress like this? And every single location we've visited, every section of the game, has left you with kind of like a an ally that you've kind of left behind. So Sir Sloane, which, who has died, but then it's left you with uh, the king, Prince Castor and his brother. In this section, it's gonna be these three. So somehow, in the, the last portion of the game, I'm guessing after you collect all the crystals or the asterisks, then all of them are going to come back and somehow help you, I think. Thank you. Huh? Oh, that's such an anime ending. You're welcome. Wait, that didn't make any sense, though. It's not like Mona meant anything to Seth. That was weird. It should have been... Elvis that saw Mona, not Seth. Right, so now we are headed to Rimendal. Like, even the locations are very structured, right? The first area was like the kind of grass plains area, the next part was like all the desert, and here is all the forest. And so each one is like, it has its own little arc, its own characters, its own side characters, its own asterisks, and then of course there's like the bigger villains that we're gonna fight after we take care of all these smaller chunks. Right, the, the, uh, the Alucard, Dante looking guy. Adam, that's his name. In all of these sections, there isn't very much to explore. You know, it seems like there's a lot to explore, but there isn't very much. It always has one main hub, like one main city, and then it has like one or two ancillary areas that you explore. Here it has three, sort of, that are related to the quest of getting those asterisks in that area. Wiswald and the Earth Crystal was like Elvis's section of the game. Now Rimendal and the Fire Crystal will be Adele's portion of the game. Yeah, every section is like, we're getting some backstory of one of the characters. And that's like their section of the game. The first part, it was Seth's portion of the game. Then Savalon was Gloria's portion of the game. Then Wiswald, and then now Rimendal. It's almost unapologetically classic JRPG. Now, is this going to be like a Lost Woods kind of thing? Where you have to go like up, up, left, down, left or something? Glowing fruit! Glowing fruit! Can I cut this as a bridge? No. All right, let's stick to the path. Stick to the path. You rang? Why are both plant and tree enemies weak to two different things? Shouldn't they all be kind of weak to fire? Okay. Well, well, we don't see you around here often. Uh, it's this freaky so Coraline villain. The pleasure? Right, these are sort of like the equivalent of the four minions, all under Adam. I'm here to report on the experiment in Wiswald. It was a great success. This is like Dr. Hiss meets Dr. Seuss. Now I must be leaving. Now I must be leaving. Oh, how neat. The fire crystal is going to be uh, discovered in a place where it's endless snow. Um, let's go to MSQ markers first. Oh, oh, what? This bastard again? So you're the traveling chef Truff told us about. Truff? You're acquainted with me old pal, are you? Oh, that's wonderful altogether. 
Are you planning to like eat him? Is that like the the twist? And how's the old fella getting on? You'll not very well let a monster waltz into Enduro uninvited. This guy's voice sounds like it sounds kind of Scottish, but it's but trying to force like a generic kind of North American accent. Uh, once again, another side quest where everyone is so amenable. Everyone is so willing and helpful in helping us get through the side quest. Hey, 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 truffle pal! Come on, like, bust out like an axe or something and just turn him into a piece of ham. Give me a plot twist. Give me something. <laughs> Mitch? 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 <laughs> Mitch? Oh, Mitch? <laughs> just make out with him already. Come on. I remember how I lost it now. I popped it off there when I was showing you a culinary trick or two, did I not? You popped it off? No, Mitch! Are you alright? That was weirdly random. There's no way we can move a rock that size, even with all of us. Elvis, quick! Throw your shoe at it! Truff believes in you! <laughs> oh, it's like... Are you learning like a new overworld ability where before he taught you how to hack trees and now he's going to teach you to hack like rocks? Press Y to smash rocks and save truff. What if I refuse? I can't refuse? I can't refuse. What? That's weird. That was a thank tutorial, you. but it was completely thank optional. You, thank you. I'm so polarized about these quote unquote side quests. So why don't you let me teach you how to make a thing or two? Starting with your old favorite, schnitzel. Schnitzels? Again? I do so love a happy ending. I don't. Not really. Right, same shit. There's a central town. And there's a... There's this bullshit again. The wisdom of the line of Musa lives on in you, I see. Oh god. Oh god. Huh? Who said that? A bird. Oi, down here. It's some kind of weird lizard. Uh, it's very rude to call us lizards, I'll have you know. Is this straight out of Frozen 2? It turns out like the fire is like this little fire lizard and it ends up like uh, scorching everything. I am Mighty Gwilym of the ancient and venerated Draconic Line. Of the ancient and venerated Draconic Line. You just stay nice and quiet in there, okay? Did she just stuff him inside of a potato sack? Now, is this like a fire-breathing Gwilym? Because all of this area, they're going to explain it sort of like the same way they explained Savalon. So the lack of the fire crystal, or perhaps its presence, has somehow caused all this. Snow? Hold on, this place is freaking huge! I pray as fervently as you do that these abominable accusations are proved false. Are you going to push this woman off a cliff to prove she's not a witch? That your innocence might be demonstrated beyond all doubt right but if you push her off a cliff the only way she can prove her innocence is to die call upon the lord of dragons who watcheth o'er us all ask of him that your guiltlessness be confirmed so if she escapes that proves that she's guilty but if she dies it proves she's innocent i hereby call upon your judgment lord of dragons watch over me wait are you serious are you serious? Lord of Dragons, watch over us all! Are you truly serious? What's going on here? This doesn't feel right. Some crazy shit out of the Crucible. What the fuck?! This game took a sudden dark turn. Oh, all the villagers are in fear. They're in fear of uh, questioning the judgment. Because they could be next. You build a snowman. You seem like a very wholesome person. Fairies are terrible. They trick humans into doing bad things. That's why we have to catch them and get rid of them all. Okay, you're you're into uh, you build a snowman, but you're into like some fairy genocide. Now let's not jump to conclusions. Maybe it makes perfect sense why people are jumping off the cliffs. Oh, there's a rear area. Oh, that's somewhat. What? What happened? What did I do? I was just trying to Push chop some grass. Oh fuck, man. You can't just... Sorry. What the fuck? I, I let us all down. Hmm? 
What? I was just trying to chop some grass. There was no warning for that at all. It's just a shrub. Right? I don't see any enemy. Holy God. Holy friends. God. What the hell are these things? Yormengander. Merciless Souls B. What am I dealing with here? What? 300,000? 300,000 HP. Welcome, friends, to this, the house of our lord. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Now, do you want to tell us about that execution back there? Now, if this is actually true, that would be amazing. If they can make us believe that this is justifiable, at least from the eyes of the, the people here, that would be amazing. But I'm willing to bet that they're going to make it turn out to be like, oh, it's just really a bunch of twisted religious fanatics. All is thanks to his draconic majesty. Oh, and that woman jumping? That was thanks to him too? Calm down. Calm down. We don't have the whole story. But how would throwing oneself to one's doom prove anything? As those who know a fairy kind will tell you, these devious creatures are wont to hide their wings. So it is like the witch trials, the Salem witch trials, where you push like a woman off of a cliff, and if she is guilty, she turns into a witch, then flies back to be burned at the stake. But if she's innocent and is just a human being, she falls to an honorable Christian death. It's giving us a very one-sided view of this guy's madness. But he didn't say it was the Lord of Dragons who actually made it happen. Doesn't that seem a little strange? Seems a little plot convenient, yes. Are you the travelers who dare call the Archbishop's word into question? Ah, oh, crap. Ah, oh, crap. Well... He might have let you get away with it, but Gladys of the Dragon Guard certainly isn't about to. You're fairies, aren't you? Brienne of Tarth? Chief Inquisitor to the Archbishop at your service. Yeah, Chief Inquisitors in Final Fantasy games, at least so far, have been uh, universally evil. Dad asked me to come and find you. That's the reason I left home in the first place. Uh, you know the Lord of Dragons everyone keeps talking about? That's him. He's your sugar daddy, isn't he? The harem that you escaped, Adele? Oh. Are you like the the go-to girl for people with dragon fetishes? It's north of town. Can't miss it. Come on. Not like we got anything else better to do, right, Seth? Right, so if our past gameplays have been any indication, we'll probably go through the same same set of uh, events. So there's a central hub, which is that town, Rimendal, and then we have these ancillary areas that more or less serve to kind of further the the MSQ. Soul food. Where's Motown? Oh, I forgot. No map. No map. Map got Arimasen. Okay, good. Everything's scared of me, so we won't have to worry too much about grinding like hell in order to get to the next part of the game. I have no idea where I'm going. One of these boxes better not be enemies. Better not. Better not! Here's one of the biggest issues I'm having with this game and the different job classes is that it seems like the job class abilities are kind of similar across different jobs. Like, a lot of these abilities are, we already got in the Bard. And some of these abilities, like yeah, removes various status effects from the target. Well, the Freelancer already had this ability. If anything, the sub, uh, I'm sorry, the passive abilities of each of these jobs is what makes the job useful. Like convert MP. Thankfully, there aren't too many sprawling paths, because otherwise we'd be lost in here forever. You better not. You better not. Okay. No. No! Is that Mewtwo? These are the kind of goofy enemies I would expect from like a classic Final Fantasy game. How is a cat a spirit? Are you a Dragoon or some kind of a, a Valkyrie? Thank you so much for coming, Adele. You got the ears. But you're friendly, right? So are you just going to hand over your asterisk? Or are we not going to have to defeat you? Oh god, she's got a tail! She's got a dragon's tail! If you speak of the so-called judgments being passed upon the people of Rheimdall in my name, then it is indeed. Ah, someone has usurped the presence and the name of the dragon god for their own twisted nefarious ends. 
Yet I cannot stand idly by while those who honor me with their worship suffer. Oh crap, that woman that jumped off the cliff. She's really dead then. Please, Adele, put a stop to this ere the madness deepens. Well, I don't mind offering a helping hand. I can hardly say no after you dropped everything to help me and mine out back in Wiswell, can I? The fire crystal is involved. I have an obligation to act. You Don't forget about me. me too. Don't forget about me, the guy who's here for no apparent reason. Gwilym will go with you. What are you making that face for? No offense, but you can't even fly yet. You can't even fly yet? How old are you? We're going to end up riding him later, right? What I hope to see in this story? I expect to see a sociological driven story on the same epic scale of Game of Thrones and the Bible, but probably not going to happen. Oh, it's late. Why don't you all stay the night? As you can see, the place is quite comfortable. Oh, come on, you have to stay. A sleepover, it'll be fun. A sleepover, it'll be fun? We barely ever get any visitors, especially not big, strong boys like you. Come on, stay and play. Are you gonna like round us up into like an orgy or something? This is like a rated T game, right? This is happening. This, this. Come on, fight me, please. And I don't often get the chance to keep my hand in. Don't want to get rusty, do I? If you play this game with your eyes closed, I think you can imagine her referring to a bunch of other things too. <laughs> Seriously, just go along with it. It'll be much quicker that way. Yeah. Oh, I'll give you a minute to get ready, shall I? Is she serious? Okay, uh, we somehow aroused the, the dragon fetish woman, so let's save first. Well, ready for a little play fight? Yes, I'm ready for a little bit of pillow fight. Okay, okay you show me back. yours, I'll I'm show you mine. Not going to. She's got 55,000 roughly HP. She's humanoid, weak to fire and darkness. You're just as strong as I hoped you'd be. Which means I'll need to give it all I've got. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Ready or not, here I come. All right, sexy lizard lady. She winked at us. She winked at us. She wants pain. It turns her on. All right, this is gonna hurt, right? This is gonna really hurt, right? Five thousand for hit. Prepare for impact. See how you like this. I'm enjoying this. I must say. Oh, I bet you are. I bet you're super enjoying it. Oh, she's got high heels and everything. And now it's time for my favorite part: the big finish. The big finish. That's my favorite part too. All right, let's finish this. What the what? Oh crap, she's building up to something. Maybe I'll get the Dragoon job once I beat her. Unless the game has been lying to me so far, that should be the case. We hit fire. Sexy lady, muy caliente. Hmm, that was awfully short. That's as long as you can last? Come on, I can go all night. Dragoons are master spear wielders who are also able to leap into the air and come down with a resounding bang. Even the description is trying to get all innuendo on us. Yeah, dragons and red mages. That's where it's at. Huh? Phew, that was just the workout I needed. You lot are tough. Wait, you're supposed to like take off most of your clothes, right? Isn't that like how all the other characters after we beat them, like they lost all their clothes? So you've the dragoon asterisk, eh? <laughs> no wonder you're such a handful. The archbishop gave it to me so I'd be able to guard Master Gwydion better. I can look after this place without it just fine. And something tells me you'll have far more use for it than I will. Not gonna lie, it feels very contrived how I got this asterisk. You know, this game, why I'm feeling it's kind of weird as far as the storytelling is because it feels like what they did was that they perfected a lot of the JRPG kinks, uh, most of them, uh, all these quality of life enhancements. And so what they did was that they built the entire story around the game mechanics. So like, we have to give you an asterisk. Like we have to give you three of them per area that you visit. Well, how can we give it to you with this woman? Well, it doesn't make any sense story-wise. She could have just given it to you. Oh, no, let's just have you fight her for some random reason. I'm the master's guardian. I can't be away for too long, especially with him in the state he's in. Then wouldn't it make sense for you to keep the asterisk? But the odd traveler or monster wanders in from time to time and 
Someone needs to be here to deal with them. Right, so I think I should hand you back your kinky leather dragon outfit. Ah, uh, you poor thing. Yes, you poor thing. Without any clothes. Can you promise you'll help the people of Rheimdahl for me? Sure. We'll do everything we can. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's time we all turned in for the night, don't you? But you keep making these, like, suggestions. Oh, why does everything involving humans have to be so complicated? Didn't you bring us down here? Why does anyone do anything in this game? With the exception, again, with the exception of Gloria and Annie Hall, I think all the other characters are quite shallow in terms of like their moral conflict or their reason for existing. Only Gloria and Annie Hall seem to have like real stakes in this game. We can't promise anything, but we'll do what we can. Oh, thank you, all of you. You bow an awful lot for a dragoon. Let's have a drink of something nice and fiery to toast your success when we see each other next. I've got just the thing set aside. Something to paralyze us in bed while she busts out like the, the carving knives and the the mask and the strap on. Okay. Ugh, I should have known better than to introduce you two. All right, let's head back to town. Take care out there. Seth is so unaroused. Some of these abilities which feel like they're so like gimmicky and situational. Like this one, perform a physical attack that's extremely effective on silenced targets, so the target must be silenced in order for it to work. All allies jump, soul jump? Okay, this is just a gimmick. This is a gimmick. Everyone jump in, attack with the power of friendship. Spells or attacks affecting all enemies will inflict more damage the more BP. Yeah, see how, you see how super situational all this is? You know what, what do you look like? I'm curious, what do you look like? Oh, that's pretty badass. Huh? That's Kane's armor. That's Kane. Did they really have to add the tail? Did they have to add the tail? It makes him look like a cocktail waitress working at a strip club. This is a dragoon. This is a dragoon outfit for her. They turned her into a, a dominatrix with a dragon tail. For those of you who play MMOs, she's got what South Korean girls call fantasy armor. Meaning that the less clothes you have on, the more powerful your armor is. She must be able to equip more stuff, right? Now that she's a dragoon. Dragoon. She should be able to equip like shields and stuff too, right? Oh my god, this makes her buff as fuck! I think many of these outfits were designed for the women. Like that's become like super clear. Nothing else to use it on. Thunder thrust. Thrust. Adele gets a thrust. With her lance. She thrusts into enemies with her lance. Buster bun, booster bun. Let's give the buns, the buns to Adele. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nod, nod. Since every class can equip every weapon, there is no, technically no optimized setup for every single class with the exception of the weapon itself. Like in terms of the armor, and the accessories, every class can equip every piece of armor and every piece of accessory. That's right, run away. Run away from Adele. Run away from her big, big spear. Collect a moon onion. You mother. Okay, I'll get you your damn moon onion. Wait, where the hell's your moon onion? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I have to go all the way back. Oh, fuck your cabbage, man. Fuck your cabbage moon onion stoop. Soup. Soup. Stoop. You call that a knife? This is a knife. One asterisk down and two to go. So let's just focus on the MSQ first. We shall let the Lord of Dragons be the judge of that. So the fairies are like the witches in this town. You were asking what do I want to see of this story? This is what I did not want to see. I didn't want to see such morally simplistic characters. Like if you could have convinced me that these inquisitors are actually acting genuinely, wholeheartedly, flawlessly acting on behalf of some good that they believe is really good, and we experience that, we understand that, that would have been great. But no, it's like, it's very much a, here's the, almost instantly, here's the clear good guy, here's the clear bad guy, and let's watch him duke it out. Have others witnessed suspicious behavior, perhaps? Strange goings on by moonlight? The surreptitious spreading of wings well hidden? Oh, her laundry is like, 
Much whiter than my laundry, she's clearly a witch. You know, I don't know if all of the accused have so far been women, too. So you think it was her he was after all along? I don't know nothing. You don't know nothing? That's a double negative. You know something. That means you do know something. That's why I'm starting to think all this is somehow politically motivated. Politically motivated? Her father's a priest? We got priest and politics? In the same game? Uh, I'm not so sure it's a good time, but... Yeah, we should probably go and see what he has to say. God, Seth, everything he says is so, like, inconsequential. Like, hey, remember, it's like he's constantly saying, hey, remember me? I still exist. I'm still a part of this game. This is a full-out fetish outfit. The Dragoon ears don't even look like Dragoon ears. They look like the kind of ears on, um, what is that, that anime? Chobits? Like the little elf girl ears? Padding and high heels and a tail. Not that I'm complaining, just observing a fact. A biological fact. Which other girl can she mean, though? I mean, there's probably 15 or 16. It could be you freaking pimp. 15 or 16 of them? Uh, I'll take your booster buns, thank you. Meet the priest at the inn, they say. Oh wait, is that like a freaking rhinoceros on her shoulder? Do you really believe Margaret's a fairy? With all the evidence against her, how could I not? What evidence? She's a fairy. Which makes her one of the ones who killed my parents. Oh, right, right. You're the, you're the one with the, the blind grudge. When they come sneaking into our village, they have to be rooted out and captured and... If necessary, killed. Same goes for you lot. As soon as I have enough evidence, you're dead. And if you have no evidence, you're gonna make it up, right? That'll do, Gladys. Sister Martha. Huh? These are friends of mine, by the way, Gladys. And you won't be killing any of them. Yes, Sister Martha. Just like that? Really? She says it and... Thus it shall be. <sighs> Poor girl, didn't used to be like that. Is this the skeleton inside Adele's closet? Did they used to be like the college threesome or something? Okay, never mind, never mind. Does your being called here out of the blue not seem a little suspicious? The thought had crossed my mind, but I can't very well ignore a direct order. Oh my god, the dialogue is starting to sound so inane. Uh, music is telling me there's a timer, but there is no timer. Music is hustling me along. Margaret, daughter of Ridian, for the high crime of being an agent of fairy kind, you must face the unblinking scrutiny of the master. The high crime of being an agent of fairy kind. She's innocent, curse you! Hardly conclusive proof. Concealing such a thing would be well within the means of such duplicitous beings. Now, the real plot twist will be if they push her down and then she does grow wings. I saw her smiling at a bird once. I saw her flipping the bird once. No! 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 Margaret! <sighs> no. She's gonna grow wings, right? And then that's the plot twist? Wasn't the whole point of this to find the fire crystal? These ancillary locations are just for, they're simple dungeons, and they're used for just kind of quick MSQ purposes. Do this, capture this, get this. Is it still fun to play the game? I th think so. The combat part of the game is actually still pretty fun. Um, gathering stuff, leveling up your characters. It's like, like the most logical evolution of where we've come almost 25 something years of JRPGs. Uh, but the problem is that this game, its main appeal is that it's fixed a lot of the issues that used to plague JRPGs, and that's it. Its main appeal is how well it's fixed them, but only in terms of the gameplay. Uh, Story-wise, it's fixed like absolutely nothing. I mean, yeah, some of the dialogue is certainly polished. I mean, we have better localizers, but if you took this exact same story and gave it to me in Final Fantasy V, I wouldn't have known a difference 25 years ago. This is one thing that I wish that they would somehow fix at some point. You end up getting so many items that you don't know what to do with them. Like I'm the kind of RPG player that I tend to hoard a bunch of the mega elixirs. And then even if you are at the last boss, just using that one or two mega potion, mega elixir would just make all the difference and just end the game. I'll never use a mega elixir. It's silly if you think about it, right? 
because it's just a mega elixir. It's just an item within the game. It has no real rarity beyond the game itself. Characters I like so far, the only two I've truly found even remotely compelling so far are Gloria and Any Hall. They have the most compelling stakes. Everyone else is doing it for some reason that I've either forgotten about or it makes no sense. I mean, Seth is doing it, why? Because he washed up ashore and has no other purpose in life and therefore he's gonna go on a quest, which is very Final Fantasy V-like. Why is Elvis doing this? So that he can learn to read his yeah, Edna's book and he's searching for the asterisks. Like it's a reward for him, like a treasure. Adele, why is she doing it? Uh, I recall her saying something about finding her sister, but that has not been touched on at all uh, since. Uh, but Gloria's reason for searching out the crystals has always been consistent because the crystals are causing this imbalance in the world. And if she doesn't retrieve these crystals, the world more or less crumbles to pieces. And why is this so important to her? Because her kingdom, Musa, befell the same fate. Annie Hall, she was the one with the most moral ambiguity. Like she was a very good person that was fighting for the wrong cause, for all the understandable reasons. And so, so far, that's why the two of them seem like they work. Everyone else, not so much. What brings you to this place? What brings you to this place? And your voice is suspiciously calm. Here lie the remains of all those who jumped. Okay, now, make me proud. Defy my expectations. Show me like a mountain of gruesomely dead bodies. 180 degrees. Turn the camera around. Come on, bravely defaults. Redeem yourself. You spoke true no. from the first. A little bit more. About Margaret. Show me the mountain of rotting, I frozen corpses. Don't know what to say. Say nothing, young man. Take your revenge, Gladys. Meet out the only punishment such beasts deserve. I mean, if I gotta choose between the villains of this game, it's not much to choose from. Any Hall, I would say, yes, was the best. She was technically the villain. I guess Bernard, too. I thought he was just some shifty-eyed bastard from Fortnite or something, but uh, it turns out, at least according to Annie Hall, that his intentions were actually just. Although I don't necessarily believe that because it seems like he brainwashed her. Oh, counter when opponent defaults? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Uh, I can't do that. One thing about this game's battles, though, I would say is that because there are so many, like, little gimmicks, that it requires you to really be strategic with the way that you approach an enemy. Like, certain enemies, like, for example, Gladys, she'll counterattack if you default. There are certain enemies that if you use any white magic on yourself, like heal, the enemy will auto-counter. Maelstrom of magic, evil powers of wind consume you. Wait for it. Yulara's... Oh, you gotta die. You gotta die fast. Survive this, you bitch! I can't default. If I default, she'll counter. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal! Nice. Nice. Triple nice. Ow. Ow. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Oh, oh, ow, ooh, ooh, ow, ooh, ooh, uchi, uchi, ow, 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 ee, ow. Hey, this is a bit, what the, what, 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 what? Because we are, we are jacked up, man. We are screwed up. This is what I'm talking about. Some of the bosses, it doesn't matter how high your levels are. You do still have to fight them somewhat strategically because they do have abilities that can take you out no matter what level you're at. Ow, 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 ow. 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 Good God. I'm at level 42. I grinded for like four something hours after the last playthrough and here we are. Oh, this is, this is personal. This is personal. Is it? Is it? What is it? I'm a Mardi Gras dancer. Aw, oh, shit. Sword masters are unrivaled experts in the way of the blade. Adopt a stance from which the attack command is automatically performed twice. Twice? Yuki, five dollars! That's some consistent donating. This is what motivates me to come back and live stream because I know that on the day I live stream, I will be eating well that night. Mmg! Quickly, Bishop Helio, go! I bet you the reason why she's defending him is because he told her some stupid lie about her parents being killed by fairies when it's him who is responsible for it. And so he became like the surrogate father. Do you still not see it? He's been lying to you all along. Come here. 
What are you doing? Wait, what are you doing? Stop that! Stop touching me in inappropriate places. But that little voice you hear? That's your own thoughts. Your own desires speaking to you. Your own desires speaking to you? Okay, come on, give me a plot twist. Tell me that he's like secretly gay or something. Come on, give me something. Like I'm constantly waiting for them to like surprise me with some kind of a twist. But it's not happening! Is he a fairy? Come on, sprout some wings. Something. Anything. You will stand before your people. Come on, sprout some wings. You're a fairy. You're gay. You're a gay fairy. Come on, something. Martha! Oh, hello, you lot. It's very nice of you to come. Oh, she's got something planned. But I think this might be it for me. She's planning something, right? This is all planned. like an amazing plot twist but like for all the wrong reasons <laughs> what the hell was that supposed to be like some thinly veiled allegory of the two of them discovering their homosexuality i can't believe how beautiful you are you've hidden it from me all along was it planned was it planned did martha plan this all along did she like secretly know and this was like the final thing that like pushed adele over the edge in exposing her true self I don't mean to offend you, Martha, but I'm not sure I believe you. Who are you? I mean, I'm I'm open. I'm just saying, like... Elvis, snap out of it or we're leaving you behind. So, like, the twist is, like, Elvis is a fairy too, right? He just doesn't know it. Here's the weird thing. Like, it was such an interesting plot twist, but I don't understand the point of it. Like, it felt like it came out of nowhere. You know what just happened, right? You know those kind of plot twists where it feels like, Oh, crap. Like, it was staring me in the face all along, and I didn't realize it until now. It all makes sense. It all ties together. This didn't feel like that at all, did it? It felt inorganic. We're not supposed to tell people. Oh, was that what the dragon meant when he said he knows her true nature? I could have... Sorry, maybe my mind was too uh, fixated on Martha's fetish outfit that I was reading between the lines a little too much. Or her true nature. Is that what you call it in this game? Her true nature? I think I told you before that I'm looking for my sister, right? Well, I recall she that. She disappeared from our village after stealing all the asterisks. So the asterisks belong to the fairies? That's right, Elvis. The asses belong to the fairies. See, this would have been super fascinating to learn about as part of the backstory. Like, we can actually experience it, but it seems like. So, they just resort to a lot of this dialogue where they explain to everything to us. For the asterisks too. You naturally thought that certain someone would make a fine companion on the search for your wayward sister. It all connects. That's why I threw my shoe in the back of your head. That's why we became friends. That's how you develop your shoe fetish. Something like that. I fear there will be no stopping the chaos now that a fairy has finally been discovered in our midst. Oh, another plot twist. The entire village is full of fairies. Everyone's a fairy. All right, but be careful, won't you? Cross my leotard and hope to die. Okay, where are we going? You better not. You better not. Okay. I was going to say, like, if enemies jump out, nasty surprise jumps out, like, here, uh, that would be a little bit too sacrilegious for my taste. A dungeon? A dungeon. Here. Seriously. Seriously? What the hell am I doing in here? Why am I skipping the party chats? I read them the first time we played this game and they got quickly very inane and completely irrelevant. And a lot of the party chat is a lot like the conversations with Truff about schnitzels. The backstory stuff about Adele, the shoes, Elvis, and the foot fetish, that was actually quite amazing. A dead end? 
A dead end, really. I swear to God. Come on, man. Run. Run, forest. Tell me they didn't just put together all of these dungeons over one weekend using a dungeon map creator. <laughs> Right, this is unnecessarily kind of windy for its own sake. My favorite artist in gaming? It would have to be, uh, Foley. She was an artist, and she died for it. I love her mainly for her eye expressions, like, ee, You dare? You dare? I do. I do. What you're doing is unforgivable. And you're not going to get away with it. Oh shit. Adele is pissed off. And I do like how the crystals seem to have a closer tie with every single one of the characters. In Final Fantasy V, the crystals seem to just choose the characters somewhat kind of randomly. Um, but here, there seems to be a purpose for each of them, except for Elvis, so far. Like, this crystal is tied to Adele's sister. It passed over once more, just as I was 50 years ago. Oh, he was hoping that it would give him the blessing. Too bad for you, old man. I got the leotard. Why? Why am I not chosen? Excuse me? Dragoon Elf Ears? Leotard? Dragon's Tail? Let's see what she does. Thunderbolt Thrust. Thunderbolt Thrust? Thrust? With a Thunderbolt? Pretty good, right? Pretty good. Pretty good thrust. Try this exercise. Shit. Oh, you like damn. Bastard got messed up. That was almost 9,000 like worth of damage. Power. Wow. Come on, I dare ya. I dare ya. Thanks for exposing cars. yourself, old man. Pun intended. Ah, my god. I could have sworn she was like begging for more. No, no, no. Come on, come on. Focus. Focus. Oh, he's got one. Adele showed him hers, and now he's gonna show her his. And I think once we beat him, it'll be the end of this quote-unquote section. Consume you! Maelstrom of magic! Forces consume you! Counter any- oh, counter any ability. No, don't do that! Don't do that! What? Oh, maybe they just, they just mean counter any ability that's done on- hit. Okay. okay, reflect, that's fine. I'm done. Prepare to meet your maker. What the hell, man? Not enough. Oh shoot, oh shoot! In the name of our Lord and the Master. Nothing to worry about. They got me. We're gonna die. We're dead. We're dead. I cast its shell, and it didn't seem like it it affected or lessened the damage of that bomb arm ability. No, that ability didn't seem like it mattered whether or not you were resistant to fire or not. It seemed like it just did a fixed 2,000 points of damage to your entire party. I think what triggered it was the counterattack. It's not personal. This time, it's business. Everyone's pissed. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Everyone? Everyone? Are you watching carefully? Blades of wind. Strike Different music. Same fires. attack. More damage. There is much work yet to be done. The What's real attack the I have to watch out for is that that bomb attack that hits all of us for 2,000 points of fixed damage. Like if it hadn't been for that, I think I would have beaten this guy. 38,000 left. You counter shit. You counter shit. No. In the name of our Lord and the Master. God, that triple thing. That thing. Check this out. Oh crap! No. Yeah. Check this out. Huh. This should do it. That counter bullshit. No. <laughs> shit. Shit. No, 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 no! That spell! 
Oh my oh, god, what fire. is it? Now this should give me lots of resistance to fire. Theoretically. In theory. In theory. Communism works. In theory. Do you have anything to counter stop? Yes, Seth has un uh, unshakable will or something that it prevents him from ever getting stopped. So the stop isn't the issue. The issue is that that attack that hits you for that hits your entire party for fixed damage. So I'm hoping that these flame talismans will make the difference. Uh, that still hurts. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. Oh no. Nice. Nice. This bitch is dead. This bitch is dead. 25. 25. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You gonna counter? You gonna counter? You gonna counter? Counter physical attacks. <laughs> a scratch. A scratch. That's 10,000 right there. 10,000 HP right there. And he's down to 13. What greater joy than to get bitch slapped by Adele in the leotard? Come on, man. Come on. Scratch. A scratch. Oh, crap. See, that, that was the decisive attack right there. That could have kicked the crap out of us right there. Not risking it. Not risking it. He's got like 13,000 something HP and I'm going to beat this bitch down. Come on, bombs away, bombs away. Come on, man. Better luck next time. Are you sure you're all right? You see that? You see that? He was able to cast that through the reflect. Oh, oh, motherfucker! Try, try countering this. It's my time to shine. Maybe. Ooh, this should be like nine thousand. He absorbs Earth! Here I go. That healed him? Yeah, the that fault line attack is actually Earth-based. I did not know that. It didn't say that anywhere. I blame the game, not myself. Not risking it. Not risking it. Oh, no, no, no! No! I'm an idiot! I'm a dumbass! We would have been so dead without those flame talismans. Some bullshit, man. There's some shit with bulls. Seth's turn. Seth's turn, please. Here I go. Oh, motherfucker. Are you gonna get it now? Try, this Try surviving this, bitch. What will become of he never spoke to you from the first. Huh? Huh? He stabbed me in the balls! Uh, such a terrible shame. What? Lesson learned, kids. Always smite down your enemies without mercy. Hey, what if this is like the village, huh? Resident Evil Village? The snowy village and the, the long scaling castle. Oh, a lot of uh, people are dying on the streets, but I don't see their throats. I don't see their blood. We're not gonna let Reimdahl fall into filthy holograder hands. Well, you have any people left? You threw everyone off the cliff. We'll be attacking in waves to try and put them on the back foot. I need a little time to get ready. Oh, okay, so once we cross this path, this threshold, there is no turning back. So I think this is a good place to stop. What jobs are... They seem like they're made for the men, made for the women, visually at least, and which ones are kind of neutral. So I think the freelancer is kind of neutral. Here's his... His black mage, which I think is kind of... I think it favors a little bit more of the women as well. It makes the men look like tuxedo mask. The white mage is most definitely partial to the women. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> Makes you look like a snow cone. Um, I think the vanguard job... I would say it's made for, more for the men, but I think the women look pretty good in it too. The monk, I think, is also made for the women. What kind of a monk is this? You tell me, what kind of a monk is this? You're dressed for a freaking Vietnamese wedding, man. The bard seems also made for the women. Do you agree? Check out those funky bell bottoms. Strut that peacock <laughs> dress. Yeah, he's got a little thing pinned to his hair as well. This beastmaster is also 
I think, made for the women. Visually, at least. Visually. See, everyone gets the same kind of porbin hood with the ears, but for some reason, the men get tails. It's like, oh, that's cute. Let's give the men tails. The thief, I think, is made for the men. Because the thief in this game, they look sort of like ninjas. Uh, but wait, wait till you see the, the outfit for the women as thieves. The berserker, I think, is also is a unisex one. I don't think it really... Uh, no, it, it's both, I think. Kind of unisex. Red mage is also kind of unisex. Kind of like a, a mime dressed in a hobo's red coat. The ranger is unisex, now that I'm seeing it here. Kind of cool, yeah, like a rogue. The shield master, I think, is more towards the men, but is also it could also be unisex. The pictomancer. Wow, that's very surprising. It's like denim jeans in a JRPG. Freaking denim Levi's jeans. <laughs> Dragoon, I think, is was made for the men. Well, no, the tail makes me think that it, it's unisex. They had kind of some fun with this one, too. <laughs> Spirit Master. Uh, I can't tell. This one looks kind of cool. This one looks very regal, actually. Sword Master. Oh, that's pretty cool, too. That's pretty dope. He gets a lion, a lion um, uh, shoulder guard. And here's the Oracle. Oh, he gets the same halo with the eyes. Let's take a look at Gloria, you're right. So, same with uh, Seth. Freelancer is quite neutral. Black Mage, I think, looks way better on the women. Yeah, the visual design. Makes them look like uh, witches. Witches and nobles. White Mage most certainly looks better on the women. It must be the hat, I think. I thought this generally looks better on the men, but I think it looks cool on the women, too. Yeah, super cool. Makes her look like Agrius or Beatrix. The monk, as I said, looks definitely way better on the women, right? They gave them like this, these flourishes and these, you know, these corsages and these pretty dresses and hairstyles. And yeah, it's definitely made more for the women. The bard, I think, is also made more for the women. Actually, I don't think the bard is made for anyone in this game. This is a fruity damn outfit. These are like opera singers. The Porobin, definitely more for the women. They don't get the, the wacky, weird tail like the men do. Here's the thief's outfit. What kind of a freaking thief is this? Who are you, Kira Knightley? This is a 1930s uh, nightclub singer and prostitute. Berserker, I think, is kind of neutral, too. Yeah, she looks pretty damn cool. Same with uh, Seth. The the ranger, I think, is... Oh, no. I think the ranger actually favors the men. For the, the women, the ranger looks like you're a nightclub singer in fishnets. Some fetish fishnets and a, a little widow veil. Shieldmaster, I think it's sort of... Uh, no, I think it actually is kind of cool for the for both. Pictomancer, oh, that looks super cool. I think the outfits for the Pictomancer and the... I'm sorry, the, the male and the female outfits for the Pictomancer look cool. Uh, Dragoon, let's see if she gets the same... No, she's got the same kind of fetish tail, fetish leotard armor <laughs> that Adele has. Spiritmaster... So spirit, oh, okay, so Spirit Master is also kind of neutral, I think. Mm, sword Master, I'm guessing, is also quite neutral. Yeah, cool, awesome. So I think uh, Sword Master is also kind of neutral, works for best, best for both both uh, men and women. The Oracle, God, the Oracle, I, I want to say it's sort of like the Bard. Like, it almost doesn't look like it fits for either. Although for the women, they get six eyes. She gets six eyes. Seth only gets four. He started off as a Black Mage. So I guess I sort of got used to him there a little bit. Eh, I want to say Black Mage. It looks better on the women, but it is sort of neutral for the men also. Hell no, does Elvis. <laughs> All right, Romeo. Uh, yeah, this was clearly, clearly made for the women. It's not more biased towards the men or the women. It, it might be just biased for specific characters. Because Elvis doesn't look good in this at all. He looks like he just scraped together a bunch of tin cans. Um, monk? Okay, can we conclusively say that it's the women that look better as a monk? Right, we are familiar with the, the Scottish leprechaun. He gets the, the goofy tail. Oh my god, they, they gave him a stylish tail. It, it swings. It's all It's got a sheen to it. It's been conditioned. Certainly cool. Very cool as a thief. Berserker? Yeah. Actually, oh, he looks pretty dope in the... 
Berserker outfit. Cool. I think um, the men most certainly look better as uh, as thieves. Yeah, the shield bearer. I think it's it kind of looks, you know, it's armor. It looks good on everyone. How does he look as a pictomancer? Oh, sleek. Oh, nice. I like the pictomancer outfits. As a dragoon, I think it, the dragoon is actually now much far more interesting. On the women, I mean, look like it looks like they gave the men like some kind of a jock strap or something. Yeah, Spirit Master, Spirit Master looks cool on all of them. These are like the High Council of uh, Krypton. Yeah, this is another case where the Sword Master looks way better on Seth and on uh, Gloria, but it looks kind of goofy on Elvis. Funny enough, I actually take Elvis very seriously in this outfit. I take him very seriously, right? Devault and everyone. This is what she looks like as a black mage. See. Awesome. She has kind of that elegant gothic Lolita look for the for a black mage as well. The uh, Ukrainian diva. This also looks quite slick on her. But certainly for the monk. Yeah, cool. We saw this. This was from the demo too. If you had to choose, I suppose it would look the best on the women because it's so fruity looking. It's so lavish and flamboyant. Uh, we've seen her in the Porobin hoodie, Porobin ears. See, she doesn't have a tail either. Here's her thief outfit. What the hell? Uh, super cool. Oh, she's got some kind of a jaguar, some kind of a wolf. Uh, this is her as a red mage. Also kind of cool. I don't think it's, it's as cool as Gloria's though. Uh, this is her as a ranger. Yeah, the ranger definitely makes a lot more sense visually for the men. For the women, it just makes them look like nightclub dancers in fetish fishnets. Here's her as a shield bearer. Oh, this is slick. This is actually very Agrius, the, the color scheme. Ooh, I love that beret. I think Adele's Pictomancer outfit is the best just because of the beret. Uh, here's her as a Spirit Master. Yeah, Spirit Master is actually kind of overall cool for everyone. Uh, the last of Krypton Scientologists. Here's Adele as a Sword Master. Nice. Also super cool. Oh, she gets a rhino on her shoulder. And this is her as an Oracle. Funny enough, the only character I think that works as an oracle visually, I think, is Elvis. And I don't know if that's very sad or if that's very comforting. Okay, Final Fantasy XIV. Someone was asking about that. Uh, it is certainly going to be a Saturday. It's either going to be 7, 8, or 9 p.m. I don't know exactly which time. It'll be for about one to two hours max. I'm aiming for two, so I don't want it to get too late. I'll hold a poll on YouTube soon just to get an idea of what's the best time for everyone. The first stream will probably be just kind of setting everything up. Uh, I will be a potato lancer. That is actually my character. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So thank you everyone for joining the stream, guys. Uh, be sure to be on the lookout for the NFT video that will be coming this coming week. Uh, but until then, guys, stay tuned and take care.